let's make an island with Unreal Engine and World Creator. This video is just going to be an overview of my process and how I make landscapes. And it's going to cover the actual landscape creation and look dev inside World Creator, and then importing the height information and the landscape layer masks into Unreal Engine. And then looking at how those landscape layers can be used to populate the landscape with all of your trees and rocks and everything you might want within a PCG framework. So let's get started in World Creator. This is the island I had previously made, and we're just going to use that as a, as a starting point today. And to start off with, whenever I'm doing look dev, I just change it down so that it's a, a smaller size. So four meter precision means everything runs faster. And we have a four by four kilometer um, map here. But at four meter precision, that means it's, it's 1024. So everything happens nice and fast. And I'm just gonna turn off all the information I have, all the colors and all the filters. And then also the sculpting layer that I did on top of the basic procedural uh, crater that I started with last time. And this time, just starting with the basic procedural volcano, tweaking sliders and making it look how, how I want it to start. And that's basically how a lot of things work inside World Creator. It's amazingly intuitive. And a lot of it is just trial and error, changing sliders, adjusting things until you get it how you want it to look. And I added back in the crater here so we get a little bit more, more of a complex little island. And just adjusting some of the height settings and having some sort of interesting coastline. Adding various noises on top, a bit of distortion. And then tweaking the, the actual levels, how it works to get a little bit of a, a beach there, a little bit of a coastline beach. And there's, there's lots of things you can do inside World Creator. This, is not, this tutorial is not really going to focus on that, it's just an overview, but it's incredibly in-depth and you can get amazing results. And there's just, it's just a lot of fun just to play around with things. And so now I'm turning back on various filters and starting to experiment with getting, you know, a little bit of the coastline in there, a little bit of cliffs, and now turning on the erosion. Once you turn on the erosion, suddenly it looks like a, looks like a landscape. It's amazing. And then lots of trial and error, lots of different erosions, basic erosions and wind erosion. But all of this is kind of up to you and each landscape is, is unique. And it just takes, you know, a bit of time just look diving back and forth and, and playing around. Adding in some little bit more rocky coastlines, a little bit of, you know, scattered bits of, of rocks. It's also possible to come back in and, and just sculpt things out a little bit, change things just where you need to, just to, like to do this just at the end, just to amplify, you know, just to amplify areas, add in, add in little extra mountain ridges or connections that you want, once you've got the, the general procedural kind of look working how you want it. You can just add a little bit of, of sculpted detail in to tie it all together. So there we have our little volcano island coming together. And once we're happy with the, the geometry, the, the general shape of the island, we can then start looking at the color information and the textures. So when I look at the adding the textures and the colors in, there's a lot of different ways you can you can control where the colors are distributed based on the flow maps and height and cavity and curvature. And we use, we use those masks to control the different areas that where we want the color. But the key thing that I'm thinking about here is the different areas that I, I want inside Unreal. So really I want a rocky area, a sandy area, and a grass area. And those are my three major areas. And within those three, 
I have kind of sub areas. So inside rocks, I have um, like a, a falling debris area. Inside sand, I have pebbles. And within grass, I then have a lush grass and a dry grass. This just helps me for when I import the, the layers into Unreal later on. But that's, that's all I'm really trying to define here. I'm not trying to define the general color or anything. I'm just trying to define those three main areas and those sub areas. And so then changing back to the full precision, the one meter precision, you can get a look of how it's actually going to look. And then once we've got it mostly looking how we want it with the colors, we can then look into exporting out our maps. So we can generate a color map and a height map. The color map we probably won't need. And then I just go through and change all the layers to either be one of those, those three different areas that I talked about. So either rocks, sand, or grass. And so I'm just using RGB here to specify those different areas. And so when I have this exported out in this RGB color, then within Photoshop, I can separate those out into separate channels, separate masks. So then I've got that first mask exported, and now I'm just coloring in and getting ready to export the sub masks, which will be for the, the pebbles and the dry and, and lush grass. And so here you can see my four maps that I've exported from World Creator. I've got the height map, the color map, which we may or may not use, and then the two different RGB masks, which will separate out into six masks within Photoshop. And then we come into Unreal Engine. And we import the landscape, import the height map first. I did change the resolution of the, um, the exports from World Creator to be 4081, which is a bit of unusual um, size, but that's just down to how Unreal makes um, landscape. So we import the height map, making sure to assign our landscape material. I'm not gonna go over landscape material creation in this video. It's a whole topic on its own, but I've already got my landscape material made up. And so I'm just going to have that assigned when I import this height map. And there it is. It's all black at the moment. But that's because we don't have our landscape layer information set up. So I'm just saving out landscape layer data for each of these landscape layers. And here I'm just adding the ocean. So this is just standard Unreal water system. You can install the, the water plugin inside your Unreal Engine. And this is just a standard ocean. I have to tweak the material a little bit. So I've got a, a wave system. But it's basically just the standard Unreal Engine ocean. Here I was having a little bit of trouble getting it to, to read properly, but it should just all work out of the box. Boom, ocean. And now we've got our landscape layers and we can just import our masks based on those RGB splat masks. So first importing in the sand mask, this is controlling where the sand is and where it's not sand and where it's just my base layer, which is covers everything. And now it looks like we're importing the rocks. We should see all of the colors of all the cliffs come in. And finally, the grass. And so I wasn't too happy of how those kind of came in. It just grass was, was not as spread out as I wanted it to be. So I went back into Photoshop and adjusted the levels, pumped it up a little bit, trying to get it so that there's less of that base layer that I talked about coming through and much more strongly the, the grass and the rocks. So you can just change the levels and, and play with them as you want in Photoshop. And now I'm exporting out my other masks for the detailed landscape layers. And again, adjusting the, adjusting the levels, getting everything to come in more or less as I want. 
So lush grass, dry grass, pebbles. And then went back into World Creator and I wanted to export out a like a debris, a rock pool debris mask, which I didn't have exported out previously. So just quickly went in and exported another layer out so I can get that kind of rocky debris landscape layer. And so that's it with the, the landscape layers imported. You can see now it's it's mostly textured. I've got a little bit of a color gradient you can see on the grass as it gets higher, but it's mostly just a flat color from those landscape layers. And here you can see just turning on the PCG, I have a volume cube and I just simply hit um, generate and it will generate all of the stones, all of the trees, all of the, the giant boulders and everything I want within my landscape with one click. So I won't go too much into this right now. I'll make another tutorial that looks into that further. But just so that you know that this is how you edit it and this is this is what it can do. So it's a it's one PCG graph and it's just pulling the information from those landscape layers. So where it's grass, it knows to put trees. And where it's lush grass, put more trees. Where there's pebbles, we want little rocks. And where it's the kind of the debris rock pool area, we want big boulders. And once you have that information, you can then can you know distort that and and do a bunch of different operations you want to to get the look you want. But here you can see that's the basic points that are being generated and spawned for those rocks. And that's that's basically what it is. It just spawns a bunch of points, which are cubes, and then you change those to be whichever static mesh you want, whether it's a rock or a tree or anything you want. Here I'm just adjusting some of the parameters, changing the size of these rocks. They're a little bit too huge. And it all just automatically updates. And so once I've got that looking more or less how I want in one small area, I can then save, very important, and select all of my different PCG boxes, which I have over the whole map, and then simply click Generate. And the PCG will generate over the whole map. It takes a little bit of time, depending on your scene, but it's surprisingly quick. And then you have a whole island, fully populated, fully detailed, and ready to play. Obviously from here, you'd still want to optimize performance. You'd want to bait the HLODs so that you can have culling in the distance while still maintain the visual look of the trees. I've not done that in this tutorial. It's just basically to show how you can get everything to spawn and optimize it just for a cinematic. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank mm -hmm. you.